Was the Arctic free of sea ice here round and why? I envisage this as a world with a vast warm pool, so there's warm water over the majority of the tropics. So this bias in warming interval, this conference is all about, is a world which is two to three degrees warmer than today had as a maximum CO2, atmospheric CO2 content, something like 400 to 420, 430 ppm. At this workshop, climate scientists from all over the world gathered to discuss the progress in our understanding of the Pliocene epoch and its implications for future climate change. During the early Pliocene, uh, we found evidence for a significant retreat of East Antarctic ice sheet in the Wilkes of Glacier Basin. Carbon dioxide was higher. We're having temperatures of five, six degrees in the annual mean. And of course, if I were to show you the seasonal plots, then it's much larger as well. Ice sheets, sea level, it's going to be huge. It was huge this time, it's going to be huge next time. So to me, one of the most important and most interesting things about the Pliocene is that it is the most recent time in Earth history which had carbon dioxide levels similar to what we have today. By and large, our estimates suggest that climate sensitivity um, during the Pliocene is similar to what models are predicting for the future. About two, perhaps three degrees of warming for every time we double the concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Which ice sheets contributed? Um, how fast did the West Antarctic ice sheet go? Did it, um, was it the main, you know, what did East Antarctica do? What did Greenland do? We actually really need to start thinking as a community and as a global society about maybe fundamental changes in the structure of the temperature, the sea surface temperature field on, on this planet. Following on from that, the interesting questions are, what happens when the Earth is much warmer? How does precipitation and rainfall change across the world? How does ocean circulation change? How, do, um, how does that impact the vegetation on the planet? The first order question is, if you change carbon dioxide, how much warmer will the Earth get? But the whole slew of very, very interesting second order questions is, what happens when you make the Earth much warmer? And, and that's where I think um, the really exciting and cutting edge research at Bristol and elsewhere is going on today. We're, we're trying to go beyond just carbon dioxide and temperature to explore the entire realm of the vegetation, biotic, and chemical systems. Temperature we might be able to adapt to, except sea level is a problem, but People really need water, so we really need to know, is it going to rain more some places, is it going to rain less other places, is the monsoon going to be starting later, which is huge, or ending earlier. These are all things that, if we can even start to provide some clues uh, from the data, it'd be really important to do. Just this past summer, at a few research stations around the world, we passed 400 parts per million possibly for the very first time since the Pliocene. So this makes a very, very interesting analog for the world that we have just created but due to anthropogenic pro uh, production of greenhouse gases. I think if we look at the paleoclimate data and all the corrections we have to make from IPCC 4 to this month's IPCC 5 have been corrections upward, meaning in terms of bad news that the IPCC was rather too conservative and if at all underestimates some of those thresholds and feedbacks which the climate system, the ocean atmosphere system has for us. Thanks for your attention. <laughs>